Hey, everybody. Welcome to the formerly known as Angel Tarot Show, but at least for the next three weeks is now the Angels and Auras Show. I'm Radley Valentine. Also with me is my co-host, Dougal Frazier. Say hello, Dougal. Hello, Dougal. I knew you were, gonna, you were so predictable. You are so predictable. You always do that. You always, always, always. So welcome back. I hope you guys got to hear last week's episode where we talked a lot about the journey of creating Angels and Auras Oracle Cards, which is coming out very, very soon. It is amazing to me. It's like, I felt like that was a journey that lasted 84 years and it is finally here, here. It's like, what is it? It's two weeks from yesterday. Two weeks from today and 84 good years, may I say, 84 well, good years. Well, it's, just, it's just like, to me, it's like, I'm not talking about the process of creating it. I'm just talking about the waiting process. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. That yeah. part is just like, it takes forever. It's yeah. like, when is it ever going to get into my hands? Yeah. And it's like, Hey House hates me because if I ask them <laughs> one more time, when are, our, when are our author copies coming? I think I would have just been cut off. We did get a little sassy about that, didn't we? We'd start sending emails and text no, messages. I got sassy about that. You did, you did. Yeah, I like that. I you're, 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 you're in charge of sass. I was in charge of sass for this because I was like, because we knew they had them. We did. You can't they, hide from two psychics. And it's like they had them. Right. They're in the right corner of the warehouse. I can they see are, it in my mind. They yeah. are. They're under a box that says penguin. Right. Oh, wait. That's all the boxes. <laughs> It's all the boxes. That's all the boxes. So anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome back. So today we're going to take you on a journey through the cards. Specifically, we are going to be talking about um, uh, the cards over the next three weeks, counting today, the different sections of the cards. And today we're going to be starting about the core cards. So I'm going to let Dougal tell you what exactly is a core card, Dougal? So the core cards, we kind of think of as being a nod to the major arcana of the traditional tarot system. We also wanted core cards to represent one singular color and one singular angel in order for you to really establish a relationship with that angel and with the color. You can also think of the core cards as sort of the epicenter or really the inspiration of this concept and this deck. This is when it began. The remaining cards are what we call messenger cards that have combinations of colors and nods to angelic presence and their messenger cards. But the core cards are really what got us started on our journey of friendship and on our journey of teaching at the same time. I'd like to think that we would be super close friends, even without Angels and Auras or a hundred percent. But it is what got us talking on the phone. Nons. Well, that's not true. Old that's boyfriends exactly. is what got us talking on the phone. Exactly. First. Yeah. That's exactly. That's what everybody starts talking about, right? <laughs> So um, what we're going to do is we're going to describe the cards for those of you who are listening to this podcast that is brought to you through mindbodyspirit.fm. And for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you get lucky because you'll be able to see the cards. Um, so um, uh, Kevin is already asking us, how many core cards are there and are they similar to our are they similar to suits of Tarot? No, they are not similar to suits of Tarot, but there are 12 core cards and the rest of the cards i guess that would be 32 right you're the accountant yeah i know right yeah 32 um core uh cards what are the messenger cards so let's start right up with uh the first card and the first card is called shamuel and it is light green shamuel it's light green so outstanding in a field because he's in a field of his own right our, 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 our outstanding <laughs> okay is archangel shamuel dressed all in pale green he has his big white wings uh opened um bro broadly open on either side and he is standing in his field with two children one is a little girl dressed as a ballerina the other is a little boy dressed as a superhero with a lightning bolt i wonder why that's there uh, <laughs> in, in the field. Also, Archangel Shamuel is holding a magnifying glass. Now, let's talk a little bit about this symbolism. Shamuel is the archangel whose name means he who sees God. 
And, and so the magnifying glass is a nod to that, being able to see and find the things that we are looking for in our experiences in that particular moment. Um, now we have a little boy here and he is dressed as a superhero and he has a lightning bolt on his shirt. Why would that be, Dougal? So light green in particular is considered the color of happiness, it's vibrancy, it's joy. And I will typically tell people I mostly see light green around children on a playground giggling because it's pure joy. It's being in the moment. And whenever I'm teaching about light green, I try to tell everyone that we've all had that moment in our life where we were children and we didn't care what the outside world was thinking. We would go to the mall dressed up as a ballerina. We would go to the grocery store dressed up as a superhero and not an ounce of our being was concerned about what the outside world was thinking. The image of the two children dressed like this, if you can visualize it in your mind, if you're thinking about it or remembering when you would play dress up as a kid, is that you're in pure joy, you're in pure ecstasy, you are just enjoying life and having a good time. I also think that you talk about green as being the only color that you can hear. That's exactly it's right. Literally like electricity. Right? Now, technically speaking, every color they say has a harmonic tone. I don't hear all of them, but green is the one that I always hear. Clear audience isn't sort of my strength, but I do always hear sort of a buzzing with green. So again, just like Red talked about, the lightning bolt is sort of the awareness that this lit color literally vibrates. And think about it. If you're happy and you're giggling and you're laughing, you can literally feel that energy coming off of people. Haven't I heard you say before that it's a little bit like sticking your finger in a light socket? You have indeed, sir. <laughs> yeah, but in a good way. You I don't talk, want to... I listen. <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> I want you to think of when someone says, oh, that person's personality is infectious. It's fun. They, they light up a room. This is the energy of light green. This is the energy of lightning. I also somewhat like, though, that we have a ballerina here because it's a sort of, a, it's a nod to not just the elegance of life, but also what I really love about it is just what he was talking about. Think about the little kids who are taking ballet. They are so excited, right? They are so excited. You put them in their little tutus and you send them off. And it's like, all they can do is like, see me. I am so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, this card says happiness, vibrancy, energy, and hope. Now, we talked last week about the fact that these cards can be read inverted, reversed, or upside down. These are all three words that mean the same thing. And what happens when that happens, Dougal? So when the card is inverted, it is teaching you about a shadow message. I'm going to say this so many times, I may drive you crazy, but that's okay. A shadow message is a good thing. If the card presents itself inverted, I want you to think of the universe as saying, we need to pause here. There's something I really want you to reflect on. So in this case, with card one, Shamuel, light green, the shadow message words are anxiety, burden, restless, despair. So basically in that moment, if you are overwhelmed or feeling anxiety, if you are feeling burdened with what it means to adult every day, all of the days, if you're feeling restless, if you're feeling despair, we want to lean to the light message of the card, which again is about happiness, vibrancy, energy, and hope. It is imperative that we all remember a shadow message is not necessarily a bad thing. It just means there's work that needs to be done. Right. Absolutely. So that's your first peek at a card. So shall we go on to the next one? Yes, please. Okay. So what we have here is divine self in orange, divine self in orange. And so what we have here, uh, per the ambassador of spirituality to Japan, is a Tori, I believe is what this is called. Well, this is sort of inspired by a, um, a shrine in outside of Kyoto called Fushimi Inari, which has Tori gates, which you've ever seen Tori gates before, typically mm -hmm. sort of this red color. Here we did them in this orange color, and there's a path to the left and there's a path to the right. This is only the only card also that doesn't have an angel on it. And do you want to tell them why connected to orange? Because there is no archangel that is orange. Right, which first we had this whole brainstorm meeting of like... There's no angel of orange. What are we going to do? You know, my wig fell off. I was confused. I didn't know what the next step was. But then we thought this is perfect because 
For orange card two, divine self, we want you to listen to your intuition. So this is the message here with orange, orange being the color of perception, the color of intuition. This is the perfect card to remind you that you have a divine self, mm -hmm. you have higher wisdom, and you are ultimately the one that makes the choices. That's right. And so on this card, for those of you listening through the podcast, we have that that structure in the in the background. And we have this character that is pure divine light resonating in white and orange headed towards these two paths. Will I go left or will I go right? Lining the path are orange flowers. I can practically smell the orange blossoms from here uh, as the person heads that way. The card says initiation, balance, connection, and spirit. Intuition. It says intuition. First, the oh, first word's intuition. Sorry. What did I okay. say? That's, that's why I'm here. You said initiation. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the initiation of intuition. There How's we that? go. <laughs> How's that for a save? Did that work okay? All right. So intuition, balance, connection, and spirit. Yeah. However, in the shadow side, we have indecisive, uneven, scattered, and ego. Yeah. So these are not places when this card is upside down or reversed or inverted. This is not a place where you want to be making a choice of any kind, even as simple as do I go left or do I go right? Obviously, do I go left or right is a metaphor for what direction in my life do I want to be heading. But when this card is upside right, we feel connected. When it is upside down, we are not. And if we think about the title of the card being divine self, it's so literal in translation. When we are connected to divine self, we are connected to our intuition. We are balanced. We are connected to spirit. When we are disconnected from those things, we're indecisive. We feel uneven. We feel scattered. Our ego is leading the process. So orange is sort of always the reminder to come home, to come home to divine self, that when we are connected to divine self, that's when we make the best decisions, those that are in our highest good. So do you want to talk about the next one? Sure. Let's go to the next one. So the next card is card number three, which is guardian angels. The color is white. Fun little fact here. So our artist um, specializes in doing a lot of artwork with colored pencils. So this has images of white wings, and then they're surrounded by really beautiful layers of a rainbow, different shades of color. And she did this first image with colored pencil, which was so incredible and so beautiful. But Hay House also said, if you do all of these cards by colored pencil, we are going to be here for literally 84 years, which Radley said earlier. So unfortunately, we had to move on from there. But I believe that the beginning first layer of this was really all done in colored pencil. And so guardian angels in the color white have an interesting component from the angelic and aura perspective. So talk a little bit about why white is connected to guardian angels, Rad. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Yes, guardian. so white is connected to the divine because the divine is considered to be bright white light. And we think of guardian angels as being our protector, being our emissaries from the divine that is there to take care of us on a, a regular basis. Generally, our guardian angels are shown, shown to us as white. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't show up to you in a different way. There is a reason why these white wings are surrounded by rainbows, and that's because white light hits a prism and poof, what do you got? You got the rainbow, right? Yeah. And so that white light can show up. So Joanna's talking about all my guardian angels are iridescent. I, I want to go to the Joanna guardian angel show and see what that looks like, right? And so the card says protection and clarity, spirituality and wisdom. It's literally all the things that you would want a guardian angel to provide to you, right? Let me say it again. Protection, clarity, spirituality, wisdom. An initiation. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, now, upside down, we have a different meaning, don't we, Dougal? That's right. We have vulnerable, cluttered, shadow, and confusion. Now, interestingly, we sort of wanted this card with the color white to be somewhat neutral because everybody's guardian angel is going to present themselves to you in a unique way. The way I perceive my guardian angel or the way Joanne just shared the way that she perceives her guardian angel is completely unique. 
So I oftentimes describe white as being like a blank canvas, right? It's this clarity. It's the universe saying you can create whatever image or life that you want to desire. So when you pull this card or when you work with this card, when you work with the color white, it gives you that space to become creative, to let your vision really flow. What does your angel look like to you? What does it sound like? What are the colors that come to you? Because just like Rad said, that prism of energy, white encompasses all color, all frequency, all, all energy. That's right. And keep also in mind that this is the one card in the core cards that does not have an angel pictured per se. It yeah. is just the wings. All the other cards have an a, a, a human representation of an angel, but your guardian angels, that's super personal. So we left it that way. This also wound up being the cover of the deck. That's right. Yeah. So next card, here's one where Dougal and I were not necessarily on the same page. So I was just in um, uh, New York City for the meeting with a bunch of Hay House authors. And so I was passing around this deck, letting people look at it. And this was the one that people would pull out and go, Radley. <laughs> and so this is Haniel Silver. Uh, this is Haniel Silver. I like and to call so, it Haniel Hot Mama Silver. <laughs> Haniel Hot Mama Silver. That's the part that raised everybody's eyebrows. Um, so here we have this super beautiful, Asian-looking, gorgeous archangel sitting on a throne of silvery blue with a moon over it. If you were a Taroist, and just think High Priestess, because we mm. borrow heavily from that, that style of imagery. She's dressed in silver sequins. I had nothing to do with it, but she is. She has, um, and she's I think, I, I, think I may have said that I want Honey Elle to look like she may be on Dancing with the Stars. I was like, I want elegance. You did say that, and that's exactly what you got. <laughs> That, that's exactly what you got. Our artist's name is Brooke Stefanelli, and she listens to direction very well. Yeah. And so she provided this image to us. And my first thought was too much skin. So <laughs> we've got a lot of leg in this image, right? A lot of leg. And we've got um, off the shoulders, all of that stuff. And so my first re re report back on this image was, I don't know. I think we need to cover her up. <clears throat> can I say, can I, I say why? Yeah, go ahead. So silver to me from the aura perspective is the color of the goddess. And there's nothing wrong with a female or someone that resonates with goddess energy feeling sexy and being in their body. We see these images of the Archangel Michael like he's on the cover of a romance novel. And I want to give our goddesses a chance to feel sexy and to feel beautiful. And we got it. So all you ladies listening, silver energy is going to make you feel like you were in your body, that you, you're you beautiful and sexy and all those things. And I, I really think you can feel it. And it's elegant to me. Maybe sexy isn't the right word. It's elegant to me. Well, and sexy. But that's how he <laughs> sold the argument to me. He sold the argument to me exactly that way. And I was like, okay, fine. We'll just leave I get it passionate. I get passionate. <laughs> yes. I was like, fine, we'll just leave her. Um, and so it's and so the words are literally goddess, okay, psychic, sacred, and proud. I say all the time that Haniel is very much like the goddess of the archangel realm, and she is very associated with the moon, hence the fact that you are seeing the moon in this. The moon is associated with psychic gifts and in, intuition. And it just wouldn't have made sense if she was wearing a moo moo, right? Like when you're in the moon, you 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 want it to touch your body, you want it, you want it, you want to feel it. So bathing in the moon in a moo moo just doesn't work for me. <laughs> fine. All right, fine. <laughs> so um upside down though, we have ordinary, blocked, disheveled, and embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. She's not embarrassed. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about intuition. You know, for, for eons, the moon and goddesses have been connected to earth-based religions, right? And there were, we don't want to dive too deep into this, but various reasons as to why that was turned into a bad thing. And what we want to do here is see this and celebrate it as a good thing. Goddess energy, the moon, what comes from the womb, the earth, mother earth, all of these things are things to be proud of. We can be proud of our bodies. We can be proud of our intuition. We can be proud of the part of us that resonates with the goddess energy. And it is a powerful, powerful energy. And Andreana just said, just blame Dougal, JBD. <laughs> so that's my new thing. 
<laughs> I'm going to get a little bracelet that says JBD on it. Okay. There, I'm here. <laughs> You're here. Next up, <clears throat> a card that we did not disagree about. We did not. That's all. true. Yeah, yeah. Not even a little bit. So card number five is Joe Fiel Pink. Joe Fiel Pink. Runner so up here for the cover, may I say, runner up for the cover. It was, it was on the cover. It was runner up for the cover, as was the next one, I think. I think mm. it was also a possibility. But <clears throat> Joe Fio Pink has this beautiful, beautiful Indian woman sitting on. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm having a problem. Uh, you describe it, Dougal. Okay, so we have Jophiel resonating in this fuchsia pink. She is sitting on a yoga mat. She is surrounded by a singing bowl and affirmations. Her arms are spread up open to the sun and the universe to accept energy. She is wrapped in a beautiful sari. She has beautiful pink wings spread around her. And this is all about self-love. The words on the card are compassion, self-care, simplification, and beauty. I absolutely love this card. Pink is one of the first cards that Rad and I, or really the first energy connection that Radley and I really talked about. Jophiel and Pink blend so seamlessly together. It's all about self-love, the universe allowing yourself to see yourself the way they see you, perfect in the moment. It's just one of my favorite cards. I find it empowering. I find it soft. I find it soothing. What are your thoughts, Rad? I agree. And it's very Jophiel. It's this very fuchsia kind of pink color, Archangel Fuchsia, uh, Archangel Fuchsia. Archangel Jophiel is the Archangel of beauty. Her name literally means the beauty of God, that whole sense of love and love of self and care of self and care of others. Um, but also, um, I think very much as Jophiel is the Archangel of Faith these days, it's really a, a powerful uh, message for me. And so all of that is here. We have this sense of absolute faith, absolute confidence, and self-care with these beautiful affirmations spread around her that say, I can, I matter, I am loved, and I am enough. Yeah. Um, and so the inverted meanings on this card are caretaker, chaotic, self-critical, and shame. This so, is a great moment to talk about shadow messages because when I see pink in someone's aura and the brighter, 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 brighter pink, typically this person is really, really loving. But the shadow aspect of pink is that it highlights self-criticism especially self-criticism that flies under the radar. Things like I'm not doing enough, I should be doing more. And pink really helps us move back into that space of unconditional love. So it was really important that we put it on there. That's why she's surrounded by those affirmations. All those self-care tools, the yoga mat, the singing bowl, all in pink to remind us that even as we love compassionately, we can't pour from an empty cup, we can take care of ourselves as well. Agreed. So perhaps my favorite core card yeah. Um, and my absolute favorite incarnation of Archangel Michael of any of my decks. This is my favorite one. So, and what I loved about it is that Dougal and I were 100% on the same page. Yeah. We absolutely were on the same page. So here we have Archangel Michael and he is sitting at a desk it, it looks like a library. I like to think of it, think of it as the Akashic Records. Mm -hmm. And stacked on either side of him from head to toe is blue. So we have this deep, beautiful lapis kind of like um, kind of blue. The book he's reading is blue. His halo is blue. His wings are blue. And if you look really carefully, sit in his lap is his sword. He's got it right where he can grab it if he needs it. He's got a blue halo. He is wearing glasses because to me and apparently to Dougal, uh, Archangel Michael is less Superman and more Clark Kent yeah. than anything. He does not have blonde hair. He has dark hair. He is super cute and super attractive, but also super mighty. These The books that he is reading are in multiple languages on the spines. The ones that are in English say things like the Akashic Records, healing arts, religion, psych, uh, psychometry, science, and, and then other things that are in um, other languages. 
And, this is and angel so, in other languages. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see them. But <laughs> is it angel in other languages? I yeah, think yeah. I know right. in Japanese it says tenshi. Uh, I believe it says angel in other languages. Yeah. Might. Yeah. Okay. And and so it says wise, honest, trustworthy, and observant. Yeah. Let's talk about the books and the Akashic records, because this was a fun moment where Rad and I were kind of channeling together. So for Blue, since I was a wee young lad, every time I would see Blue in my mind's eye, I would see stacks and stacks of Blue books in my head. So every single person that's ever seen, I've seen Blue around, I would always say, Blue looks like stacks and stacks of books going up beyond the mind can comprehend, because you're constantly absorbing information. And then Radley said, it's interesting because Blue to me and Michael often are connected to the um, Akashic Records. And I stopped and I said, I don't normally talk about that because not everybody knows what the Akashic Records are, but that's totally a connection to Blue. So it just kept coming together and coming together. And I, there's something about this visual representation that I think is such a perfect blend of our intention and our vision and what we were trying to create. It just always gives me goosebumps. Yes. And thank you to the person who just said this looks like Radley, maybe when I was 24, <laughs> but not now. Um, so inverted, a card says fearful, disappointment, guarded, and self-doubting. Yeah. These are all things that Archangel Michael can help you with, help you to feel safe, help you to feel protected, help you to feel like you don't have to worry about things, to give you confidence, to help you to have this sense of, I can sever my energetic connections with that sword that is in his lap. Anytime that I need to, he is here to help with that. Yeah. Next up is Raphael Green. Do you wanna talk about this one? I do. So I get really, really excited about this one because we have a lot of hidden symbols here. So green for me has been about communication. It's about creativity. It's the way that we express ourselves. Raphael is draped in this beautiful green sort of um, gauze. How would you describe that? A robe, I suppose. Mm -hmm. A robe. We also talk about relationships with communication. So if you look closely at the robe, you've got every single relationship symbol there. You've got the man and the woman, two women, two men, all different kinds of relationship. A nod to creativity is we have a harp in the background. And if you look really carefully, the strings of the harp are paintbrushes. Because this is about awakening your creativity, the way that you express yourself. I think he's so sweet. He's got long, wavy hair. He's just this cute, cute guy. Super, super. There's kind of like a surfer vibe here. But I see him as like very approachable and very safe feeling. The words on the card are love, travel, humor, and vitality. So these are sort of the core essences of green, that when we express ourselves, we attract love. When we move energy, we travel. When we're having fun, we radiate that green again. Vitality is life, stepping into life. This is a very, very happy card, in my opinion. It is. And it's very, very much to me what Archangel Raphael looks like. Uh, you'll also notice that he is wearing an emerald green heart around his neck and holding the caduce, which is a, a symbol that is very much represented for Raphael, but also in the medical industry. And so that's yeah. a whole element of vitality here. But those words that we talked about, Archangel Gabriel is the Archangel of travel. Yes. Check. He's the Archangel of love and romance. Check. He is the Archangel of Vitality, check. And in some lore, I don't know why, but he is said to be, Archangel Raphael is said to be the Archangel with the best sense of humor. I think mm -hmm. it comes from that book of Tobit where a lot of this other stuff came, came, comes from. Um, inverted, we've got emptiness, hibernation, sarcasm, and lethargy. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful card. Yeah. Okay. Should we go to the so, next one? Yeah. So next up, we have the rainbow. We have Raziel, Archangel yeah. Raziel. He is, uh, well, uh, that, that way, so, so, so this is a good talking point. So <laughs> yeah. Radley and I wanted this deck to be as inclusive as possible. Um, and we were just talking about different body types, different lifestyles, different backgrounds, different age brackets. And we had a conversation about, well, what would it look like to include someone that may identify as non-binary? 
to anyone listening in the non-binary community, if we miss the mark here, I apologize, but our intention was to do our best. Right. If we but miss the not- mark, it's Dougal's fault. <laughs> just blame Dougal. Just blame <laughs> but that was our intention here. And again, Raziel with rainbow, all of the colors represented. <laughs> So the idea here is that any soul is represented. This is not necessarily female nor male. This is not necessarily old nor young. This is not necessarily a specific background. We wanted this to feel as approachable and the doors being as wide open as possible. Right. And so we have Raziel in rainbow colored robes trailing with rainbow light from their movement towards earth, holding a lantern. There's a very much for those of you who are Taroists, there's a bit of a hermit nod here from that deck, uh, from the Tarot deck. But um, Raziel is holding a lantern, lighting the way. And everywhere that Raziel steps on planet earth, the feeling of inclusion of rainbow light is felt on planet earth. And so the card talks about enlightened, adaptable, soulful, and connected. I love this. This card always gives me some tears here. I don't know why. There's something about the the image of the planet, right? That we're all connected. We all technically come from the same home. Uh, There's just, I I find this card really peaceful. Uh, It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel comfortable. I hope it does the same for others, but I just find this card to be really, really moving. Now, the shadow messages on the card are skeptical, rigid, materialistic, and detached. So again, the shadow message is being, if we're not embracing the rainbow, if we're not seeing all sides of ourselves, all things that are beautiful in the planet, we might experience skepticism, being a little bit rigid, materialistic, earthbound, meaning detached, not quite connected. And so that's the goal of of this card. Next up, we have Sandalfon in turquoise. That's right. So you want to describe this one? So Sandalfon, turquoise. Turquoise is another interesting um, color that you and I connected with a lot. Turquoise is considered the color of forgiveness. It's a higher vibrational color. I often call it a color of ascension, meaning I don't see it that often, but it's a powerful color. It's the color of kindness. It's the idea that we are rising above something difficult to see it from the divine perspective. And when you describe Sandalfon, correct me if I'm wrong, that their head is so high up in the clouds, their their feet are off the ground. Am I saying that correctly? The feet, their feet is on are on earth, and their head is in heaven. That's what it is, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes. again, so turquoise rising high above, seeing it from the divine perspective. So we see this peaceful image of a man dressed in turquoise who is being showered with these words or what we represented as prayers that prayers. people were sort of sending up, right? So some of the prayers say, I don't have my glasses on, Reg, you have to read. It says peace and (laughs) um, um, abundance and healing and answers and charity. But there are also prayers about betrayal and lack and loss and pain because that's because prayers from the human race come in both prayers for the positive and prayers for relief from the challenging. Yeah. And And so Sandalfon is this archangel that is the archangel of prayer. He is said to take our prayers, wrap them up in a wreath, carry them to heaven, and lay them at the throne of God so that source can answer every single prayer. And then those prayers, answers can rain back down. And the card, like he said, forgiveness, seeking, freedom, and healing. But in its inverted sense, we have resentment, bitterness, withdrawn, and pain. Because yeah. when we do not feel like our prayers are being answered, when we do not feel forgiven, That's right? right? When we, or if we have not forgiven. Or yeah. if we have not forgiven, forgiven, right? If we are living in judgment or living and feeling judged, then yeah. that is not an enlightened state. And that is a challenge for us and why this card might show up as inverted. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with the next one. So, uh, uh, Andriana said something earlier, okay, mm. um, about, well, why didn't you just make the orange card be Uriel? Because Uriel can be yellow or gold, but Uriel can also be red. Well, we kind of we kind of worked that <laughs> angle uh, because the next card is Uriel in gold. Uriel in gold. 
And so here we have this archangel. Uriel is generally shown to be an archangel that has a flame in one hand and a scroll in the other. In this particular situation, though, Uriel has a quill and is writing words onto a scroll with this beautiful gold background all around him. And that scroll is unrolling and fluttering around him. And the card says passion, epiphany, entrepreneur, and being driven. Archangel Uriel is the archangel of, epiph of epiphany, the archangel of brilliant ideas, of wonderful opportunities that create the opportunity for transformation. You just, from an or, you, just from an aura perspective. So whenever I see gold around someone, one of the things that I'll always say is that a gold person loves lists. They love a list. Mm -hmm. So here we have Uriel writing things down, checking things off the list, getting things done. A gold person is independent. They turn their vision into reality. They get things done. So this was a card that um, from a symbology, uh, from a symbolism perspective, came together really, really organically. Um, so the inverted or shadow words are imbalance, workaholic. That is a big one for gold. This person works a lot, but they aren't necessarily enjoying it. Detached and sacrifice. A lot of gold people have tunnel vision. They feel like they're supposed to only do one thing. They forget to enjoy things. So if the card is inverted, it's just reminding you to sort of do a little oil check, if you will, and get back into the light side of the color. Now, drum roll, please. Please. Drum roll, please. So here is Uriel in red. Yeah. Here's Uriel in red. And so, what I love about this too is two different, very interpretations of oh, the yeah. way Uriel can show up and look. Right. We, we have Uriel in gold with his blonde hair and youthful appearance, even a slight sense of freckles on his face from all that sunlight. Right. And, and the light flame of God. But in Uriel red, we have this beautiful woman who is african-american who is dressed in red robes with big white wings and a red halo who is laying her hands upon an asian woman sitting there who is taking in the love has mm. her hands crossed over her heart and is taking in the red energy that comes from uriel uh, to be brought into her heart to feel the emotion and the love tell them about red so red is often seen around empaths. It's the energy exchange we have emotionally with other people. So the woman sitting on the bench is not only just taking in energy, she feels big energy on the planet. And so when you're an empath, sometimes your heart is like a microscope. So we really wanted that imagery to be here. Like this person feels very, very, very intensely. But again, it's also the energy exchange we have with other people. So the words here are emotions, healing, devotion, and integrating. Again, the emotional energy of being an empath, healing energy of being able to provide healing for yourself and for other people, devotion, this person leads with their heart, they put their heart into everything, integrated, they are balanced and on the planet. When we are in red and our emotions are balanced, we thrive. The shadow messages, you want to do the shadow messages? Yeah, but I first want to just say one of the things that Uriel was thought of is the Archangel of Emotional Healing. Yeah. And so we have that element here, too. From an um, inverted side, we've got apathetic. We have wounded, unfulfilled, and divided, which yeah. to me is just about as far away as you can get from Uriel energy. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to talk poiple? Last of our core cards, look at this beautiful card. This is one of the cards we went back to the artist a few times, Zadkiel, the color is purple. Zadkiel to me, uh, purple to me is the color of leadership, but from a really balanced perspective. When we talk about a true leader, we talk about someone that inspires other people to be a leader. So we went back a few times. I, we, I, we wanted the facial expression to, re, to be right. We wanted there to be um, power, but we wanted there to be grace. We wanted there to be tranquility, but we wanted there to be the sense of self. And I think she really, really captured it. Now, Zadkiel is pictured in sort of a field of, um, well, I can't Lavender. Think of it. Thank you, Field of Lavender. And Rod, talk about what um, they're holding in their palms. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Zadkiel is holding in one hand the earth and in the other hand a watch, a clock. Yeah. 
So we have time and we have the love of earth. He's also wearing a peace sign um, and is standing on a beautiful, well-worn path that goes through the lavender that we are seeing. So we've got this whole energy here of of this sense of forgiveness again, because that is a big thing for Zadkiel, the Archangel of Forgiveness, um, but also this whole sense of finding the balance in life. Yeah. I also love the image of the globe being in the hand because I always say that a purple person thinks outside of their backyard. They're interested about what's going on with different parts of the planet. That's what makes them a leader. They want to raise money. They want to raise awareness. They want to raise consciousness. Now, the words we have here are destiny. When we have purple, if you pull this card, you're connected to your destiny. We have pride. You're proud of who you are. You're standing tall and in your power. We have conscious. This person is awake, right? We have forgiveness, which Ryan talked about with Zad Kiel. Forgiveness of others, forgiveness of self. Really, really powerful. Yep. And inverted, we have indecisive, ego, lost, and judgment. Judgment being the exact opposite of forgiveness. <clears throat> And exactly what Zedkiel is not about, but also these other energies that have us in a place where we are not being very earth focused. Yeah. So that is our little parade through the core cards. For those of you who are listening and didn't get a chance to do this, you can go to aaoracle.com and sign up for um, the all of the free gifts and bonuses that we have for pre-ordering this deck. One of the things that that gets you is what all of the people here who you may be seeing um, who are watching this live today. These people are live. And as people who are live, they get to ask us questions. They maybe get a reading and you would have that opportunity rather than listening to this as a replay, as a podcast or watching it on YouTube, aaoracle.com because we've got two more episodes coming after this one. Okay, so let's take some questions from folks, shall we? I just have to say that was so fun too. They're just going through them like that and teaching them. I know it's my first deck, so I get a little excited. Sorry, it was fun. <laughs> <clears throat> so you want to pick really, uh, yeah, let's go to Pat. Hi, Pat. I just dropped my card, so you have to start going. See. Hello. <laughs> oh, thank you for calling on me. I just this I have never felt anything like this with any other deck. Other people have chatted in there and you're bringing tears to my eyes, guys. And, Aww. you know, I love you guys for this. I can't, I have to be here with you guys because your energy boosts my energy and fills my heart. So I am just thrilled for this. I can't wait for it. It's not too, it's coming just before my birthday. Yay. Can we use uh, that as a testimonial, Pat? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I have no problem with that at all. I, I like to do testimony, so <laughs> it really makes a, it makes a big difference for me, really, and um, where I'm at in my journey. So anyhow, I was just wondering what you guys would have to say to me, do a reading or, you know, interpret I'll start my aura. <laughs> Yes, so I'm going to like pull a card. Okay, and here we go. <clears throat> so the card that I got is Divine Magic, mm -hmm. which really does sort of like match Pat because she's a student and I get it. And so what we have here is this beautiful rainbow that is coming soaring out of a well much like a wishing well. And out of that well are all the colors of a rainbow, the seven colors that we technically ha have a tendency to associate with it. And each one of those colors is associated with a particular thing, a gold coin to represent abundance. We've got a book contract with that to associate with creativity. We have a crown to associate with our empowerment. We have a red heart for love. We have a microphone for speaking in front of other people and teaching. We've got the third eye to represent intuitive skills. And we have a dove that is flowing up to represent peace and spiritual enlightenment. And the card says wishes and goals, dreams and accomplishment. So 
to me, this is basically saying to Pat, I was like, this is a time for you when that comes to what wishes do you want to make? What is it that you're wanting to create? What are you hoping for? Throw a penny in the well and make a wish and and look for that particular wish to start to come true. What do you have? Pat, is it your birthday? Because people on the chat are saying happy birthday. Yeah, no, it's, no, well, no, it's no. coming up. Okay, right. okay, okay, okay. It's coming I was just up. 11, 11. It's my okay. birthday. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. So Pat, first of all, from an aura perspective, when you speak, today I'm seeing blue, quite a blot of blue swirling around your head, neck and shoulders. Now, one of the essences of blue, all that information we talked about at the top of the show, all those stacks of books, one of the essences of blue is moving from the student into the teacher perspective. Now, the card that I picked for you is perfect timing, which I know I say this a lot, but is one of my favorite cards. Um, depicted in perfect timing is a clock, but it's also half the sun and half of the moon. There's the golden side representing the day. There's the silver side representing the moon and nighttime. It doesn't matter where you are, what time it is. It is the perfect time right now. You are in a position to really step into your power. You don't have to think about it. We all know Pat likes to think about it. She likes to think about it this way, that way, all of the ways. No need to think about it anymore. You are ready to do this. Now, the words on perfect timing are auspicious, clockwork, planning, and patience. So it just feels like to me, and especially as you're getting ready for your birthday, that you are stepping into what I consider to be a signature year. This is a big year of grace. This is a big year of power. This is not a year of waiting. This is about you really embracing what you can do and making it happen. Oh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Gives me a lot of hope for the, and actually I better do my damn numbers, huh, Radley? <laughs> for next year. You're muted, Rad. <laughs> You're muted, Rad. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. You need to do your numbers now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do my numbers for sure. I got to get those ready. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome, Pat. Don't overthink it. No, I know. I tend to do that. I've got oh, that yes. little yeah. goal. And I got a more presentation for everything. Yeah. yeah. Balance. <laughs> okay. So let's talk to Bridget, who's dressed in orange. Yeah. 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 Oh, is that a different Bridget? Hi. Sorry, is, hi, Dougal. Hi, Radley. Uh, hold on one sec. Wait, oh, we have... oh. Battle uh, of the Bridges. Hold on. Think... Battle of the Bridges. Yeah, hold on, Bridget. You should oh. be coming up in a second. There you are. Okay. Oh, is it me or no? Yeah, yeah, it's you. Go ahead. Oh, my my daughter was chatting with me. She's like, "It's not you, mom." <laughs> <laughs> well, you're wearing orange. Yeah, you're yeah. Orange. Yay! <laughs> I, um, I, I, I just love everything that that you're teaching us. It's just so fantastic, and um. I so resonated with Uriel, who was my first angel. And wait, wait, which which version? Because the first color that comes up for you is gold, and then I picked um, the power of prayer, which has gold and silver in it. Which made me want to ask you if you're self employed. Are you self employed, Bridget, or is that the gold? Uh, yes. Now, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, own stuff. Yes, very much so, Dougal. Um, you know, I, at first I thought it was it was gold, but there was so much red in there that it was such a combined force that I was like, oh gosh, that was a, a real combined set of energy for, and he came or she came, I felt it was a he, but she came right to my heart. Mm. And it was just the most beautiful feeling I've ever, and it, and it felt like healing. This uh -huh. is an interesting conversation, Brad, and obviously you're the angel expert here. Yeah. So how does that work when an angel presents in multiple colors? Do you pick one? Do you work with both? Well, I think that that's a mix. I mean, for me, it's like in the purely angelic realm, I would pay attention to what the color is and notice in the future which color that tends to, it, it should probably settle down mm. to one color or the other. But mm. we're not talking about purely in the angelic realm. We're talking about angels and auras. Mm. And so to me, if Uriel is showing up as gold this time and red the next time, then I would be looking at the messages of gold and red. Uh, and and well 
right? And, and yeah. It's yeah. Like, so, okay, Uriel's gold this time. How does that reflect to me? But next time it's red. And so what do I do with it then? Yeah. And I don't, Radley, he never, he, he didn't come back. He stayed with me. But when he was there that night, he showed me rainbows of kaleidoscope vibrating colors of just beauty and it was more of just this intoxicating pure love like mm-hmm. I've never felt before that brought angels to both me and my daughter mm-hmm. what what made what gave you the impression that it was Uriel um the business card the, no, just the, <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> was like okay remember me um no I, I just heard that name. And mm-hmm. then later on when Sarah, who's my daughter, she she had more of a connection to angels on a regular basis than I did. She's like, mom, I think it was Uriel. Mm-hmm. So now if you have a different idea, let me know and, and teach me. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to step on your, your angelic experience. If you got oh. Uriel, it's Uriel. Uh, and I think it's funny that you are wear, wearing orange of the red and the yellow and the mix of the two. Oh, um, how, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I, so oh, stick with I, Uriel. And I also right, love the expression. I'm not good. I'm not going to step on your angelic experience. I want that on a pillow in my living room. I want it as a bumper sticker. <laughs> I'll go get it embroidered right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that right away. But I think it's interesting that I also pulled this card for you, the power of prayer. So the imagery in this are two hands in prayer, one hand being gold, one hand being silver. But when you look at the card on the gold hand, there is a bracelet of silver charms representing as many of the major religions in the world as we could. And on the silver hand, there is a gold bracelet representing all of the major religions of the world. The idea being that we are all things. Way back in the day, gold was considered to be the masculine aspect of energy and silver was considered to be the feminine aspect of energy. But again, we can be all things. Uriel can be gold. Uriel can be um, red. So I think it's interesting that you're pulling in this sort of play with color and play with approach. Now, the words on the power of prayer are surrender, believe, affirm, and release. So Bridget, if there's something you're waiting for, right, if there's something you're noodling or trying to figure out, you've prayed about it, you've thought about it, at this point, we sort of have to cut the cord and trust that it's going to come to you the way it's going to come to you. But the powerful sort of nod from the angelic world, from the universe to say, we hear you, we're working on it, like it's happening. Mm -hmm. And that keeps that, that is a recurrent theme. Yeah. You know, I pull um it's the balance of female and masculine energy is is what sarah's chiming in um when she pulled cars again it's just amazing so again i'm gonna validate 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 because spot on oh my gosh just spot on and how do you know when the cards are your angel telling you past what you've done versus what's happening for what you're currently going through. Well, I mean, I think that, well, first of all, I think it has to do with the question that you ask. Now, if you're asking a question that is just like, tell me what I need to know, then it's about your own intuition. It's, it's, if you're pulling a card and you're immediately thinking, wow, this totally reminds me of that time when I was seven years old, then you need to be looking at that particular moment. If it's resonating for you in this moment of, wow, this is an experience that I am having and I absolutely want to be um, uh, connected to that moment, then that's where you should be. But it is your own intuition. Now on November 4th, Bridget, you you set us up here for this. So this <laughs> on November 4th, and uh, we are going to be doing a live release of the deck. We're going to be talking about it. If you've pre-ordered the deck, you also get PDFs of different spreads that we do. And there are spreads where you place the card that will tell you this is about past, this is about future, this is what's presenting you. Bradley and I worked really, really hard on those. But I agree with you. If you're pulling one card, it really depends on the question at hand being. Okay, so you want to pick somebody? 
Why does Kim wrote in here, does synesthesia play into reading auras at all? I see numbers, letters, and words in color, but don't see color around people. Just wondering if I should try to remember or tap into that. Is that something you can work on? So Kim, that's a great question. I love to nerd out and look at the ways that the metaphysical world and the scientific world come together. And I've always said as an aura reader that the science world would say that I had synesthesia. If all of you have never heard of that before, synesthesia is when two senses in the brain overlap. So some people smell color or when they hear music, some people taste things. I literally see color when people are starting to speak. It is point of view from there. I believe it's vibrational. I believe it's energy. I believe it's coming from the universe. The scientific community may just say, that's how I interpret things. That's how my brain works. But I just think it's interesting when those two worlds overlap. So just because you aren't seeing color around someone physically, but you're having an internal experience, that is real and very similar to what I'm doing at the same time. Cool. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to go back to, well, let's just grab Kevin here. Okay. Hi, Kevin. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I was going to ask if there was going to be a course on teaching everybody, you know, what spreads to use, but you just already answered it. And um, much like the others, folks, I don't necessarily see colors around people. And I always felt like I was a bit on the back foot because I wasn't seeing an aura. But Dougal, you just said you associate a smell with a color. And I had not realized until right now that I will smell something first, like I can smell smoke. And then I'm seeing brown or gray or charcoal or those deeper colors. And the That's other exactly way I've right. seen colors is purple can come up as really deep, deep and rich. And then mm. I might see purple that might almost look pink. So mm. I've seen that around people, but I never really associated with seeing their aura. Uh, so I'm fascinated with a, this deck, but my question is, you have the 12 core cards. Would they be considered important messages when they show up in a reading or mm. like, is it an extra something? Do you want me to answer that, right? Uh, well, since it's, go ahead and I'll say what I have to say. So I, it, I think of them as marker cards. I do think of them as being sort of laser focused or very specific. The core cards are also sort of like a journey of different aspects of self, of who we are. We technically have all elements of the core cards and the core colors inside of us. One might be leading, depending on what we're going through in the moment, but it's sort of like a kaleidoscope of all of the different aspects of what it means to be sort of like a whole unified being. That's sort of the answer from the aura perspective. What yeah. do you think from the angel perspective? Angel, um, from the angel perspective, it's what angel can help you with these particular situations at this moment. So, yeah. for example, if you pull a three, if you do a three card reading and you're getting this message that's all sort of about career and changes you need to make in your career, and you've also pulled um, uh, abundance and prosperity, is that emerald green? Who? What's well, I've forgotten? What's emerald? What's abundance and prosperity mostly? Abundance, well, it depends. It can be gold, it can be green, it depends. Okay, gold and green, I'm not stupid. Yeah. Yay, <laughs> I did learn. Okay, so it's like, so you might feel that I need to be working with Raphael or you might be feel like you might be working with Shamuel or Uriel, one of those are angels that are gold or green so it can give you that kind of element. Please also note, and something we haven't talked about that we'll be talking about next week is that when we get into the messenger cards, you're going to notice that every card is, is reflective of two colors, That's right. not just one. So these 12 colors are like Dougal was saying, very laser focused. And I also want to say just from the world of clairvoyance and teaching people for years and years and years how to see color and energy around people, which every single person can do. If you're listening to this, every single person can do it. But the brain creates a lot of pressure. 
Part of the goal of the deck is to take that pressure away from you so that you can start seeing color more naturally. The colors will come up in the card. They will present themselves. Your brain will relax about it and think, oh, I can just focus on the color on the card. And then I guarantee that will actually wake up your third eye. So you start having more vivid images and visions in other ways. But let the cards do the work so that you can have fun and relax. Thank you. This whole concept is brilliant. I mean, I'm sure you worked long and hard to create it. It is just so brilliant uh, beyond anything I've ever seen or heard of before. So, you know, it's probably going to sell millions all over the world. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, you, Kevin, well we, we did sweet. have a happy moment where we are the number one um, uh, new release in Tarot this today. Yeah. And you'll stay, I'm sure you'll stay there through New Year and beyond. I mean, <laughs> it's so much fun. All that's in there is so much fun. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. That is super, super sweet. That's Thank really you. Sweet. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's it for today's episode of Angels and Auras here on mindbodyspirit.fm and also on YouTube. Thank you, Dougal, for being here with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was fun to play. It's always fun to play with you. So don't miss it in the next two weeks. And if you want to be a part of this live so you can get your questions answered live, then go to aaoracle.com and sign up for after you have pre-ordered the deck. That's it, guys. Bye.